Hey guys, Anthony Piacciapone here back with another market update and we're just wrapping up the week. So what we're going to do is go over what happened this week, where we see the market going in the coming weeks and our update on our short position. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up if you appreciate the video and without further ado, let's dive into the charts. So what we do is I'm focusing mainly on futures, trading futures on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're looking at ES, which is the S&P 500 futures. And what we can see is I actually closed out half of my short position at break even at 4080 because Friday we had the dump in the morning, continuation lower. Uh, I did a midweek update where we I said, but I think we're gonna be pushing below 4,000. So on Friday, we had the sell off in pre-market and then we pushed up throughout the day. Uh, once we pushed down to 4060, I moved my stops to break even on half the position. Reason being is because we actually came straight to support to the left. So I thought this was an area where we could have a bounce and come up. The question is, do we bounce up now and make a lower high or do we bounce up and sweep highs and come into that 4250 area? Unsure yet, all kind of depends on CPI. If CPI comes in hot, then we're gonna dump right away. If CPI comes in lower than expectations, then obviously we're likely to sweep the highs. Now, I was cautious because we had a big change where analysts revised their CPI projections now. As you can see, CPI is looking at 0.5% now, and last month was negative 0.1% for month over month, and core is at 0.4%. So these were revised up, and it's showing that now the expectations are an increase, a tick back up in inflation where this wasn't the case before, but secretly now we had analysts revise their their estimates just before it comes out on Tuesday. And obviously I think we're just gonna chop around until Tuesday. Tuesday when it releases, that's when we'll see if it's lower than expectations or higher. And the algos are gonna be all over it in pre-market, 8.30 a.m. The second it comes out, if it's below expectations, the market just goes straight to the moon like multiple percent. So you could see ES futures be up 100 points in one minute or down 100 points in one minute, which is about two and a half percent. That'll happen most likely. So we did come down to this level here to the left. If you see about Monday, January 30th, now about the 4080 to 4090 area, came back and had some buying, bounced up. So likely probably Monday will just come up even higher. Monday might trade up into the 4120 area. And then Tuesday is when we'll either have the big move down or the big move up. And then Tuesday, we either see something like this or we see something like this. One of the two cases are happening. Uh, that's why I lightened up my short 50% of my position. So that way I can add back the position afterwards. Uh, I still actually think that the most likely scenario since they revised the estimates up Inflation comes in lower than expectations or at expectations, and we may not go all the way up and explode right away, but I think we'll actually trade up and sweep these highs, come up to the 4250 area. Reason why is because if you take a look all the way to the left here, where my mouse is, you see the resistance to the left at 4254. That's where those lower wicks are. We didn't really trade up into there, so you know we come out, we sweep the highs one more time, and we push up there. I've been saying this for a few weeks now. I thought we'd come up to the 4250 area. Then I could add back the other 50% of my short position at 4250, where my current cost base is at 4080, and I'm still looking for that first target of 3950, where my mouse is here on the downside. Second target being a sweep of the lows just below 3800. As soon as we move down, I'm going to be taking half off at 3950, moving stops to break even, and then target two will be just below 3800, and that's where I'll be setting the other half of my position. So ideal scenario for me is I'm looking to see, basically basically in my case, I'm looking to see us trade back up, sweep the highs one more time, trade up to 42.50, add the second half of my position. That'll move my cost basis up to about 41.70. And then from there, take first profit at 39.50, somewhere in end of February or end of March. Uh, and then second target being 3,800.00 near that uh, end of March area. We did get the breakdown that I was looking for. I said that if we get this breakdown on HYG, then we are likely to trade below 4,000 on the S&P 500 in the coming days and weeks. So still think we're gonna see that, but I think there's a possibility that they could stop out shorts one more time before coming down. Still have the huge push to the upside on the dollar. Uh, pushed up and then just basically basing here at support not a huge pullback so from here we could launch up even higher and when the dollar goes up the market goes down so 
That's what you could see coming for the dollar in the coming weeks. Same thing with rates. Rates broke out. Uh, you know, obviously it could be a false breakout. We could just be coming up to the uh, res the resistance to the left at 3.8 before continuing lower. But this is still something significant. Again, as the 10-year and the two-year climbs, the market's going to go down. But we could see a cooling off if the infl inflation does come in below expectations. Same thing on the two-year. Uh, two years looking really strong. Honestly, this is looking more concerning. So you know, we we came down. We basically just traded to the support to the left all the way up October 4th, since then broke out to the upside. So this is looking really bullish where the 10 year looks more like it could be like a false breakout where it's still kind of trending lower, but the two year and the dollar are starting to look like it could possibly making a new like higher and starting to trend back up. And as that happens, that's when we see the market continue lower. So just to finish up, we're going to take a look at the news next week. So Monday, nothing really. Tuesday is the CPI. That's what's going to dictate where we where we trade for the next weeks, essentially. Then Wednesday, you have uh, core retail sales at 8.30 a.m. And then Thursday is when we have core PPI, which is the producer index. And that's going to be 8.30 a.m. as well. Friday, nothing really special. So we're all everyone's looking out for uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. That's when we see most of the news. I'm going to be continuing my uh, short bias, but lightening up my position now and then using the 5 and 15 minute chart to take day trades from about 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Give the video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader. Again, I mainly trade ES futures. I also trade NASDAQ futures. This is just the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I trade them instead of options because options decay with time where futures you can hold your position, set your stops around the clock so you can stop yourself out anytime, take profit anytime. You don't have to wait for regular market hours like you do with options or, or stock. So that's why I trade futures. Let me know in the comments down below what you trade. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.